All right, so now we're taking taking a look at the third FRQ in the 2025 AP Physics 2 exam, the experimental lab question here. So let's take a look at this one. We have an experiment that's given a resistor of unknown resistance, air-filled capacitor with unknown capacitance. Student asked to produce the expected time constant of the circuit if these two circuit elements were connected in series with a battery. So we're going to put them in series. You can even imagine we're going to put them a resistor and a capacitor in series like that. Right? The student has access to a battery of known EMF, a switch, an ammeter, a ruler, and wire. So they didn't give us a voltmeter, right? Only measuring the current. The plates of the capacitor are square, and the separation between the plates is small compared to the dimensions of the plate. So that's like the ideal parallel plate capacitor equation we'll use. Capacitor is initially uncharged. Assume that the dielectric constant of air is 1. Describe a procedure for collecting data that would allow the student to determine the expected time constant. In your description, include the measurements to be made. Include any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. So when you're going to put something in series, now we don't know the R, we don't know the C, we can't like try to calculate those things. So your goal is not to be able to calculate R and C because you don't know those things, right? So the, the best way we want to do this is actually to measure what the current and all we can measure is the current so we have to think about what happens when you put a battery here a switch and then um you're going to put the r and the c and you're going to put the ammeter in series right so put the ammeter somewhere in series it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you put it as long as it's in line because the current is the same anywhere in the loop so we're going to then close the switch we're going to measure the current and you got to remember with the rc time constant like initially the current's very high and then the current is going to decay down to zero because eventually you wait a long time the i is going to go to zero so this is going to be the i and so your expression for i the current is going to be some initial current e to the negative t over the time constant so at time zero this will be i zero this we call this i zero here and then eventually it will decay all the way down to zero. That will be our general expression. And so then we want to look at that equation and linearize it. So this is kind of the setup. From this equation, you can try to figure out. So the first part is just to describe what we're going to do, what data we're going to collect. And we're literally just going to collect the current readings over time. OK? So, so we're not going to have a nice curve like this. We're just going to have a bunch of data points along at spaced intervals because um, yeah, you're going to need another time. I guess they didn't really. Uh, do we have a way to measure the time? Let's see. Yeah, I don't think we can because we, we don't have more resistors. We don't have more capacitors. We can't vary any of those things. So um, unless they're saying, yeah, I don't think I don't. It doesn't say we can change the capacitors, the air filled capacitor. So it's not like I can vary anything like that. So I, I'm going to assume that we have some way to measure time. OK, so the way I would um, do, you know, let's let's type up the answer here just because there's a lot of steps in here. Um, so what are we going to start with is um, place uh, the, the battery switch resistor ammeter and capacitor in series. Then we're going to at we're going to record the time and uh, close the switch. Um, we want to read the ammeter values, ammeter values every, I don't know. It, it kind of depends on what kind of time constant we're talking about, but let's assume that it's reasonable to read every second for until the, We'll say every, yeah, every second until the current is about 10% of the original, uh, the, the current, the current when the switch closed. Just to say, like, you want to, you want to capture enough points in there, right? Just to, and then I think that's fine. That's multiple data points. Nothing to vary. That's the tricky thing about this one. There's nothing really to vary. We're just, we're going to record it. But so... Since there's nothing to vary to reduce uncertainty, we'll just repeat repeat this um, three times, and and we're just doing that to just ensure that uh, ensure that it you know there's no uncertainty or something weird about happening about it. Okay, now we're going to describe how the data is going to collect how we're going to collect the data. So we're going to have these current values, the i, and we're going to have various times. Okay, so um, you want to look at this equation, i equals i0 e to the negative t over tau. And we want to linearize it. So we're going to take, we're going to take, uh, 
or take the natural log of both sides, ln. And so this would be ln of i is equal to ln of all of this. But you know, when you L, when you take natural log of a product of two things, you can make it ln e to the negative t over tau. And then that will cancel. So you get ln of i is equal to ln of i0, plus these will cancel, plus negative t over tau. And so what can we plot is we can plot time on the x-axis, OK? So we could say this is our y variable, because that's our data. This is our x variable. And so then our slope will equal negative 1 over tau, right? So then we're going to say you will plot the natural log of the current versus time and the slope would the, the slope of the best fit line slope of a best fit line would equal negative one over tau okay so this is a tricky experimental design question honestly just because you, there's nothing to vary um, like other ones. So experiment two, the student is asked to determine the capacitance of a new parallel plate capacitor. For each trial, the absolute value of the voltage of the potential difference across the capacitor is varied. The charge Q stored in the plate is measured. So we know Q versus, so that's Q equals C, you know, CV. Indicate two quantities, either measure quantities from table one or additional calculate quantities could be grafted to produce a straight line that could be used to determine C. Well, we'll just make this our Y variable, this our X variable, and the slope would be the capacitance. That's the relationship between charge and uh, the capacitance. So that's going to be, we're going to put Q and absolute value of delta V there. We're just putting delta V. It doesn't really matter the absolute value there. And so we don't need to modify any of the values. Kind of interesting. This one is just straight up. Like, can you plot this data as is? And it should be linear. So I'm going to take a picture of it and put it down here so we can plot it. Again, you can use Desmos for this, but honestly, you you still have to label the axes. So we want to go through that exercise here. Okay, so we're going to plot on the x-axis. We said we would do the potential. So this would be delta V volts. And then on the y-axis, make sure you put the units in there. Y-axis, you'll be charge. And what are the units of this? This is going to be times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs, times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs. Don't forget that times 10 to the negative 10. And then we're going to be looking at spacing these out. And ooh, there's no solid lines, kind of interesting. Um, so we're going to go from 0 to 10. So almost like you want this to be 5. So let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then, so this is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This was, oh, sorry, let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so each of those are 10 marks. So you could just make these, this 10 volts here, like make this 5 volts, 10 volts. That will cover, you want to cover at least half, but that will only go from there to there. That's not like my favorite. So we need to expand it out a little bit. Maybe if we start it, we're starting at three. Um, so we have 30, we want to span 10. Let me think about like what kind of spacings we want to do with my calculator. So I ended up settling on starting it at three and every four marks would be like a, a single one. So then we go from three to 10 and that's a nice range. We're gonna cover a huge amount of this graph. That's awesome. And then we're going from 2.4 to 8 here. So um, I, I, that one you can probably start at 0. And then we just went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, so cool. Each of those is 10. So we could make them 1. We've got to make them 2. 2. Actually, we'll start at two on the bottom. You don't because we don't need the y-intercept necessarily, so we just want the slope. So we'll make it two, four, six, eight. Okay, cool. So now we're covering a huge wide range in both axes, and now it's easier to plot, and then it's easier to do the calculation here. So we're going to do three, and then two point four. Now these are all ten, so that means um, each of these is point oh five. Is that right? No, so it's a uh, two to, is it 0.2? So 2.4 is going to be right here. 
Okay, and then we're going to go to 5, and then we're going to go 4.2. 4.2 is going to be right there. And then we're going to go to 7.2. 7, this is 7.25. 7.2 is a little bit less. And then 5.6. So one, two, So this is 4. He's here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's 5. 5.2, 5.4, 5.6. And then we go to 8. And then 6.6. 6, 2, 4, 6. I hope it, on the actual test they had like solid lines because this is really annoying. You'd have to like, I should use a straight edge and then mark the lines out. But like normally they've done that before. So then last one is going to be 10 and then 8. So 10 and then 8. Okay, cool. So that's our line. Now we're going to plot our line. Okay, cool. And then we want to pick two, that's the draw the best fit line and then calculate the experimental value, pick two points here. So we'll pick this one here and this one here. So this is the point uh, 9.5, 9.75 in the X. The Y value is going to be, this is 10, so this is 9.8. And then this value here is going to be 3.5. And the Y value is 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 8, 2.8. So here we're going to say the slope is going to equal the capacitance. And don't forget that there's a times 10 to the negative 10 here. So we're going to do 9.8 minus 2.8, all of that times 10 to the negative 10, divided by the difference in the x would be 9.75 minus 3.5. And then that's going to be 7e negative 10 divided by 9.75 minus 3.5. And so it's going to be 1.12 times 10 to the negative 10 um, uh, Faraday's, Farads, like that.